What up, Tube? What are we doing today? Today we're going to start talking about performance breaks, how to set up, make pressure, specifically manual breaks. All right, so I got a Willwood pedal assembly here, and that's going to be my show and tell for the day. What we're going to try to do, well, not try, what we're actually going to do is figure out and instruct on how to start your brake system. Now this is going to apply to anyone who's modifying their brakes from start to finish. In other words, vintage, classic muscle cars. So vintage cars, classic cars, muscle cars. People that are going with a booster delete, how to do that appropriately in regards to creating the right amount of pressure and volume to your four-wheel disc brakes. Now, for the point of reference for today, we are only referring to this in regards to four-wheel disc brakes. That means calipers on all four corners, no drums. Okay, it's very popular amongst the classic car and you know pro touring world and uh, and vintage cars to go with manual brakes. Uh, part of building the car is making a smooth firewall, eliminating that big booster and going with just a flush firewall, a pedal and a master cylinder. Now manual brakes has a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths and a lot of people that have been around classic cars for a long time, muscle cars, know how it feels to drive a mid 60s, early 70s, four wheel drum manual brake muscle car. It's not fun, you have to plan your stops. It's it's just uncomfortable to hit the pedal and have to really get onto it, stand on the brakes. So luckily now, there's a, there's components out there by companies like Willwood, and basically they dominate this in giving you the right options and the right calculations and the right master cylinder combinations to create the right amount of volume and pressure needed for your disc brakes without a booster. So what does your pedal and your master cylinder do? The pedal and the master cylinder basically are designed, the pedal's your lever, and it pushes against the master cylinder, which engages the push rod and creates output pressure to your calipers. That's essentially what it is. How much pressure do you want to see? Well, I mean, that can vary depending on the weight of the vehicle, the application, what it's being used for. But generally for a street car, what the general rule of thumb is usually about 800 to 900 PSI, that's pounds per square inch, you know, with normal leg effort. And normal leg effort, for the sake of the equation today, we're going to dictate that as 100 pounds of force on the pedal. So if you were to put a bathroom scale behind a pedal and push down on it to 100 pounds, that's what we're talking about. A 100 pound person taking a big step. Most of us can do that, and that's what we're gonna consider a comfortable pedal for today. How is pressure made? through the master cylinder. Well, the master cylinder is basically a pump that pushes pressure out. It's a one-to-one. -one. Now, one-to-one, -one, you're not gonna make a lot of pressure. So, you have the pedal, and on a normal, newer stock vehicle, so we'll say anything, you know, in the 80s to now, everything was pretty much power brakes with a vacuum-assisted power booster. With good vacuum, a large booster, which is your torque. So, the larger the booster, the more assistance you get. That's going to allow you to help the leverage in the pedal to create the pressure out of the master cylinder. Now when the vacuum booster goes bad or when there's no vacuum introduced, now you have manual brakes. So whatever that leverage is, usually about three and a half to four to one on a, on a power booster system, that's all the assistance you get with no, the, no, with no assistance of the booster. The other way to do it is HydroBoost. HydroBoost is a hydraulic assisted pump that does the same thing as the vacuum booster. Now, now, what we're trying to get to is eliminating all that. So basically having a nice firewall mounted master cylinder with no booster, no hydro boost, just the pedal and the master cylinder. How do we get to that properly? How do we get to that making that 800 to 900 pounds of pressure? So the main two things to accomplish is for proper manual brakes, that means good pressure, good volume with not having to stand on the brakes is using a the proper pedal ratio, that's the leverage in your pedal. So one to one is me pushing one to one. Six to one is now you have a lever, okay? So we want the proper amount of leverage along with the proper bore size master cylinder to create the pressure needed. Now, 
most OEM classic cars, so we'll just use a 68 Camaro as an example, would have came with either a one inch bore or one and a quarter inch bore master cylinder, depending if it was disc drum or drum or drum drum, and then also have a vacuum booster would needing at least 17 18 inches of vacuum consistent at idle so as many of you know you change a cam in one of these older motors go to a bigger carburetor that vacuum starts to diminish very quickly now fuel injected engines like ls motors are not as affected nearly as bad with, with the vacuum as uh, the older motors but what you need is that right amount of leverage the larger bore size master cylinder so more volume Okay, so either larger diameter line, larger diameter bore internally on the master cylinder, all that is going to contribute to how hard you have to push on the pedal to make the pressure you need. So the larger the bore size, so the more volume, the more force is needed to create output pressure. So a one and one eighth bore master cylinder is going to require more force to make that 800, 900 pounds of pressure than a 7 8 bore master cylinder. Now the difference between a 1 and 1 8 bore and a 1 inch bore in output pressure if all things are constant is about 20% which is quite a bit. So what's the ideal pedal ratio? The ideal pedal ratio can vary depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Again we're going to try to keep this as generic as possible and we're going to give a little bit of a small range. Based on my experience through Willwood and the many builders I've worked with the range we're trying to achieve for a streetcar, pro touring, uh, you know, road race, that kind of thing, we're looking at about 6 to 1 as a minimum and 7 to 1 as a maximum. The sweet spot is usually 6 to 6.5 to 1. Now, Willwood does offer different bore size master cylinders, you know, to accommodate that even if you needed to go higher. Some off-road vehicles go as high as 8 to 1 because they require larger pistons and that's we're going to go into that in the next segment or the next the next course. So how do we figure out our pedal ratio? Let's draw it out. All right so there's two forms of pedals well generally you have a hanging pedal that comes from the top and a floor mount pedal that comes from the bottom so we'll do both. First we'll have a hanging pedal we'll call this our firewall okay and the pedal is going to mount up generally you have your bracket and the pedal comes out with an arm and has a pivot point here and the pedal will curve out and you'll have your foot pad and then you'll have your push rod that comes from the master cylinder okay and connects here that's your fulcrum point so we'll call the pivot the A the foot pad C and the fulcrum B. So to get your leverage, what you're gonna do is you're going to measure from directly straight down a straight line from A to C. Don't follow the curve, straight line. We'll call that 12 inches. We'll just say we measure that, and that's what it is. The next one is a straight line from A to B. Straight line. We'll call that two inches. So you divide the longer by the shorter, that equals 6, that gives you 6 to 1. Now this might be shorter because most OEM power brake vehicles with a power booster are going to be between 3 and 4 and a half to 1. So this is what you're trying to figure out and hopefully land for, power, for, for, sorry, for manual brakes. Let's show the other way. All right, so for a floor mount pedal, so a pedal that's either mounted on the floor or coming through the floorboard like on lots of hot rods, you're going to get a floor pedal. Let's, let's say we're building a 33 uh, coupe, and the pedal is going to be mounted here, all right, and it's going to come up and do this with your pedal pad there. Okay, the master cylinder, we'll say, is mounted here, has the push rod that mounts there. So now this becomes your A, this becomes your B, and this becomes your C. So your pivot, fulcrum, foot pad. And in this one's the same thing, from A to B, straight line. And again, we'll just call that 12. And from A to C, straight line. We'll call that two. Six equals six to one. 
Very simple. That's how you determine your pedal ratio, your leverage. And again, we're trying to hit between 6 to 1 and 7 to 1. Let's go to the pedal assembly. All right, so now we're going to do this on the pedal assembly itself. So this is a Willwood pedal assembly. This is a universal pedal assembly uh, where you can custom mount. You see you got four mounting holes here up onto a support under your firewall. This would go through the firewall and then you'd have your master cylinder for your brakes here, clutch if needed there. And this is a Willwood master cylinder tandem. So you have actually four ports, but you can use two on left, two on right, however you're running your master cylinder and plumbing your lines. This is a manual brake setup. It does not have provision to mount a booster. It's not designed for that. Okay, so again, A, B, C. This is A, this is B, this is C. So, we would take our measuring tape, and I've got one hand, so give me a sec here. So, going roughly from center, you got 12 inches. That's your A measurement. Then we're going to take our B measurement, which is right around 2. And I, I'm eyeballing this. That gives you 6 to 1. So this pedal right here has the proper leverage for what we want to do with manual brakes. So what do we need to get the right amount of pressure now from the master cylinder? Okay, so this master cylinder happens to be a 7 8 bore master cylinder. Our Willwood offers this and a couple other styles of master cylinders with, the, with four different bore sizes. Primarily, the 1 and 1 8 and 1 inch bore are used for power boosters and, uh, you know, with good vacuum. This one, 7 8 bore and 15 16 are the go to for manual brakes. So, now that you know what your pedal ratio is, you need to decide on the master cylinder. So, with a 6 to 1 pedal ratio, the 7 8 bore master cylinder will work well. It'll give you about 1100 psi output pressure with 100 pounds of force or normal leg effort on the pedal. That is really, really good, but a couple factors size of pistons on the calipers, you know, what you're trying to accomplish. You, the individual, a 7 8 bore master cylinder combined with a 6 to 1 pedal ratio, the pedal travel will be a little further. Again, smaller the bore size, less effort, but you have less volume. Therefore, the pedal will have to travel further in the bore to fill your master cylinders. So, if we're going back to that 68 Camaro, and if you measure your stock pedal, your stock pedal on an A-body Chevy 68 Camaro, or we'll say 66 to 72 A-body, has about a 6 to 1 pedal ratio of stock when you use the upper hole for the clevis of the master cylinder. It has two holes on that stock pedal. That being said, if you're using OEM calipers uh, for the front, so, you know, General Motors 72 style large piston, single piston calipers, you probably want to go with more volume than 7 8 bore because they the larger piston requires more volume to fill. So the 15 16 would be good. Now, will the 15 16 worth on a Willwood kit? Yes, it will. Now, here comes the trick. What do you want? Do you want a firmer pedal with some feedback or a pedal that travels a little further and be touchy on the bottom end? Most people like that neutral feeling of, okay, I feel it there and I can push through it. That's the 15-16s bore. The 15-16s bore with a 6 to 1 pedal ratio will give you approximately right around 900 PSI. That's with normal leg effort. Now, of course, if you got a slam on the pedal, you're going to make a lot more pressure because you're going to put a lot more force into it. So that gives you a basic idea on how to set up manual brakes. Now, our next one, from here, we're going to go downstream. We're going to go proportioning valve, residual valves. As we get closer out to the calipers, you know, uh, we're going to compare, you know, does a single piston caliper have more strength than a six piston caliper? All those things. So we are not sponsored by Willwood. We are not sponsored by Willwood, but you know a guy. So luckily enough, we're able to have the ability to use these displays to go through this tech session and leading out to the rest of the brakes. 
I hope you all learned something today. I hope you enjoyed the display. We're going to continue on, like I said, downstream. So we'll end up finishing the breaks over about three or four videos. So stay tuned. That's all I got for today. Hope you learned something about manual brakes. You can make manual brakes work really well. The top pro touring guys all run manual brakes. If I was building a car, it's going to be manual brakes. And my wife will be able to drive it. Driving a manual brake vehicle set up properly, I would allow my 81-year-old dad, my 79-year-old tiny little mom, drive that car safely on the street. So don't be afraid of it. Do the math. And if you have any questions, ask me. Have a great week. God bless.